what would actually happen if you ran out of electrolytes? Now, if you ran out completely, you would die. But if you ran out just a little bit, all sorts of things would happen. But the main big thing that'll happen is you'll lose electrical power of your nerves, your muscles, and your cells. I have a really short little demo to tell you exactly what I mean. All right, we're gonna do an experiment, a demonstration. We have a light source. We have a power source, it's plugged into the wall over here. We can see the cords and we have an incomplete circuit, okay, electrical circuit. We cut the wire and we put the wire into distilled water. Distilled water is water without minerals and without electrolytes. Electrolytes are electrically charged minerals, okay? So we have no conductivity here. You can see there, there's no light. So we're gonna take some electrolytes here take a scoop of electrolytes and we'll pour it in to this distilled water and let's see what happens and okay, now we're going to mix it with the water to be, make sure it's uh, dissolving and look what's happening we have a a complete circuit now so one of the main purposes of electrolytes in the body is to power the nervous system, which is the electrical system of the body, which powers the muscles and all the different organs. All right, so now that you know generally what electrolytes are, let's talk about how you would create a deficiency. Well, one way is when you start doing fasting, especially if you do prolonged fasting and you only drink water without electrolytes. You see, our bodies don't store electrolytes for a long period of time. I'm talking about potassium magnesium, sodium, chlorides, or calcium, okay? They don't store these minerals. So if you're drinking water, first of all, you're diluting these minerals when you're fasting, and then you're not eating, you're gonna run out of electrolytes. And a lot of people are already running on a low tank of electrolytes. And so when they start fasting, they might not feel good. They might feel dizzy. They get fatigue, keto, flu, other symptoms, and they might even pass out. Very important to take electrolytes when you do fasting. All right, number two, if you start the ketogenic diet, you may run out of electrolytes. Why? Because you're switching to ketones or fat fuel. You're no longer running on glucose. And what happens is your body dumps a lot of these stored glucose. So stored glucose as glycogen is just a bunch of uh, glucose molecules strung together with a lot of water. Because for every one gram of glucose that's stored, you have three grams of water. So glycogen is a fluid-filled sugary substance that's stored in your liver and stored in your muscles. It's not stored in the brain. It's in the liver and the muscles and other organs as well. So what happens when you stop eating sugar is you start dumping all this glycogen as well as fluid. An average person could lose like 13 pounds of extra fluid. And with the fluid comes electrolytes. So you're going to lose a lot of electrolytes like even potassium. So this is why I recommend electrolytes with keto and fasting. But on the flip side, when you consume a high carb diet, especially if there's sugar and refined carbs involved in that high carb diet, you also become deficient in electrolytes because to store that sugar as glycogen, you also need potassium. So when you lose glycogen, when you do keto, you lose potassium. And then when you consume a lot of the high carbohydrates, you lose potassium because it's locked up and stored in the glycogen, which is not always readily available to you. Quick story. My wife and I, when we got married like 31 years ago, we went to this uh, Italian restaurant and we had massive amounts of pasta, pizza, bread, desserts, wine, more desserts, more bread, more pasta. So we're driving home and uh, I'm not feeling too good. Okay. I try to go to bed and my pulse rate is just like, bam, 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 just like way, way too high. I didn't know back then what it was, but reflecting back, it was a major potassium deficiency because to store all that sugar, my body was sucking potassium out of the blood and pushing into that glycogen. And so the pulse rate went up and that's why, um, Number four, increase pulse rate when you run out of electrolytes. Now, also when you sweat, vomit, have diarrhea, if you're on diuretics, other medications, all of these can create an electrolyte deficiency. All right, the next question is what symptoms occur when you start running out of electrolytes? Arrhythmias, why? 
because electrolytes power muscle, not just your muscles like the skeletal muscles, but your cardiac muscles. And so you may not uh, initially just feel arrhythmias, you might just feel like a heart palpitation. That could be an electrolyte deficiency. All right, number two, fatigue. Why? Because electrolytes power the body. They give the body energy. And the two minerals, sodium and potassium, work as a major pump to generate a tremendous amount of energy in all the cells to make everything work. And without those two electrolytes, things are going to be very, very low electrically. That's the term keto fatigue when you start keto because a lot of people don't do electrolytes or you might experience muscle weakness. That's usually a sodium deficiency. A person's not consuming enough uh, salt. Okay, three, dizziness and dehydration. You just don't have the fluid to run the body. And if we don't have that, we get dizzy uh, because we're dehydrated. All right, number four, I, I already talked about that. Five, muscle twitches, spasm, and cramps. So many people when they're sleeping get these cramps and they don't know what it is. It's an electrolyte problem. All right, number six, constipation. Well, your colon is smooth muscle. So again, it's just another muscle that could be affected by electrolytes. Seven, headache and brain swelling. Now this relates to a sodium deficiency uh, many times. It could relate to other things, but Let's say, for example, you decided to exercise and drink a lot of water and sweat and not put the electrolytes back in, and you kept drinking more and more water. You can end up with a severe sodium deficiency that's called hyponatremia, where the brain actually starts swelling. So it's important that we're not hydrated just with water. We're hydrated with electrolytes and water. Number eight, you can go into shock. Number nine, feel nauseated you know, get the keto flu, 10, a loss of blood clotting factors, and that's specifically calcium. So you can see there's a lot of things that can happen when you run out of electrolytes. Probably the most important electrolyte is potassium because you need it in such large amounts. If you haven't seen my video on potassium, I put it up right here. Check it out. Before you go real quick, I have a course entitled How to Bulletproof your immune system. It's a free course. I want you to take it. And here's why. Here's you. Here is your environment. Everyone is focused on this over here, avoiding your environment. But what about here? What about strengthening your immune system? That's what's missing. This course will show you how to bulletproof yourself. And so you can tolerate and resist your environment much better by strengthening your own immune system. I put a link down in the description right down below. Check it out and get signed up today. Hey, before